CSS Grid is a um, newish piece of CSS uh, technology, and um, in its basic form is a layout tool. Um, so very quickly back in the day to do any sort of layout, um, you had to do all sorts of weird things. Um, though, you know, HTML was originally just a uh, document language and um, CSS came along to help style documents, um, but not in any sort of layout, right? Uh, so this is like more like um, adding bold text and headings and, and um, you know, things like that. And then links, of course. And uh, so people started wanting to make uh, layouts and more interesting layouts and not just, you know, pages of text and uh, started finding ways to do that. Um, I don't, I, I thought about making a bunch of examples of, um, you know, how it used to be doing different layouts and um, thinking about it kind of made me sad because <laughs> um, I used to do it. So when, when we started doing web development, I, we used tables uh, like way back in the day, it was like pretty much the only way to do layouts. And then um, some people realized that there's a lot of better ways and uh, yada, yada, yada. We, I'm not gonna dig super deep into it uh, for this lightning talk. So uh, today we have, um, technology called CSS Grid. And um, Grid is, so we're gonna pull up Can I Use and uh, Grid. So this website is called Can I Use. And if you are wondering about browser support for literally anything, um, this should be your first stop <laughs> if you don't know about it already. Um, and we can kind of see here that um, CSS Grid is actually like really well supported across most uh, modern browsers. And um, even IE will try to mess with it, although you kind of need to, be careful if you're going to try to, I don't know, it doesn't support everything and uh, it does some things differently. So I probably would stay away from that, but um, you can confidently use it uh, and uh, across pretty much every single other browser. Um, and what CSS Grid does, does is it gives us a bunch of um, really nice ways to apply layout to uh, different components um, without having to uh, do things like add specific widths to the, child components. Okay, so I'm going to use this uh, phrase called child components. And so what I mean, if you can uh, see this screen, um, if this is our container. And so all of these divs are child components. Uh, that's what I mean when I say that. I'm probably going to say it a lot. Um, so this, this uh, I, I just started this as like a, as a fresh start. So there's, there's just some styling and no, no, no grid or anything like that. And uh, by default, we get a nice sort of stack. Uh, that's just how divs work in, in HTML. Um, and then if we wanted to do something, if we wanted to use grid to make this into a nice little layout, we can say something like this, display grid. Okay. And then now we're using grid. Um, you can't tell any difference because by default, grid uses one column and stacks things. Um, uh, we can also kind of use this gap property and um, gap is nice because it will stick um, a space in between your, your grid elements without having to do margins and things like that. Um, so that's how we know we are actually uh, in business here. So we have a, a gap between each of these child ones. Um, so I just want to, so grid is, has a lot, a lot, a lot of cool um, and different ways to do things. I, I'm going to stick with, uh, for this talk, I'm going to concentrate on one called grid areas, which is um, one of my favorite ones, and it's and it's pretty neat. Um, but just to get us started with um, some very basic grid stuff, um, so grids uh, in CSS have have um, template. Okay, wait, I need to do template columns. Grid, grids have columns and uh, rows, right? So if we say we want our grid columns to be uh, three columns here. Um, so this this unit FR uh, stands for fraction. Um, so now we have our uh, nice elements right lined up in a three column grid. Um, the grid will do a lot of automatic things and the ways that it does it um, can, can be a little complicated, but roughly speaking, uh, if you don't tell it anything different, 
what grid is going to do when it's laying out things is it's going to look at what you told it to do with columns and rows. And then it's going to just start on row one and fill across the columns, fill across the columns, fill across the columns until it's out of elements. Um, so, 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 and you can see here, I number these um, child elements so we can kind of keep track of what's going on, right? Um, using grid, we can do some, some like, we can do some swappity doing here. So if we want to say, item uh, six. All right, so we can do something like, we can say grid row is one, okay? And then um, uh, grid column is one. And I don't know, I'm gonna hit save here. And so our item six here popped right up to column one, row one. And uh, since we haven't told one, you know, these specifically to do anything different, um, they'll just kind of, six takes the first spot and then the rest of them flow just like we were saying before. Um, the, uh, so, so you can, yeah, you can say grid row, you can get say grid column. Um, and then you can also do things like, yeah. So, so if we want to have uh, six, we want to go from have six like stretch across, right? So here's a kind of newer syntax. And, and so you can say here, you can say either which uh, column to stop at, or you can say there's a span keyword. And so we want to say span two columns. Um, and you can see here that that took care of it for us. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of like cool things you can do just with this. Um, one of the ways that I uh, really, really enjoy to set things up instead of um, straight columns and doing this and doing specifying exactly which row and span is uh, there's a property called grid template areas, okay? And this lets us specify these areas and give them names um, right off the bat. So we're gonna stick with three columns. So I'm gonna say six and six and I don't know, B, okay? And then, um, oops, and then we'll say, I don't know, Dan is awesome. And um, instead of saying row one and in column one, we can say grid area and six. And hopefully I pull this off right. But this should give us this exact same layout, right? So if we said, I mean, we could say this was item five, just so we can make sure it's working. But yeah. Um, and you can say, we will, let's say, uh, item one is grid area and it's a pretty interesting syntax because you can see that um, when you're setting up the areas, okay, these are in strings, right? And so this is like one string for a row. Right? Um, and then the grid area names actually become keywords. So these aren't strings. They're just, they're just, uh, they're, they're like, they take from, from here, but they use this. Um, one of the cool things, so <laughs> this is like the base. I'm gonna kind of dig in a little bit quickly uh, to some actually useful layout, right? But the coolest thing about this, right, is that we can say uh, this and we can say uh, six, I don't know, I messed up those namings, but without changing um, really anything below it, um, all I changed was the template areas. And now we have, you know, six here. So, so this means six is taking up these two, these two rows. And then we have these other columns. Um, so that's kind of the, the basis of the rest of the examples um, we're going to run through, uh, hopefully quickly. Um, am I, was that swappity do? It was a swappity do, yeah. Um, all right. So the, yeah. So um, instead of one, two, three, four, five, right? Let's, let's, let's do something like this. All right. So this is more like a web app, right? Um, this is, uh, well, we started with the exact same thing I just started with, except uh, named the item something useful. But we can do something like, all right, so our, our container here is display grid. We have um, a brand and a search and a title and a sidebar and a body and footer. Uh, so, so we can do something like, all right, so what I like to do is uh, I'm going to say, I want to have this be, uh, what uh, brand search and uh, title title? All right, we want title to go all the way across, and um, sidebar body, and then footer uh, footer footer. 
Okay, and so what we've done here is um, ideally what we're going to have is, and so we need to uh, like apply these actual grid areas to these things still. But what I'm saying here is I want you know branded search to be here. I want title to stretch all the way across. I want sidebar and footer to be next to each other, and I want footer to stretch all the way across. Um, and I meant to do this a little bit earlier so we didn't have to, but you know, uh, brand is like grid area brand, right? So, um, and what do we have? Search, right? Grid area. You can see where this is going. Search. Um, grid area still. And a side <laughs> uh, grid area. I renamed these like very recently. So, um, Hopefully I get them right the first time. Sidebar and uh, what is it? Article grid area is body and footer grid area. All right, footer. So there we go. Okay, so here's our here's like a very simple kind of thing, right? Um, this might not be exactly how. We want to lay out, but there's there's a lot of different options. Um, the other nice thing about what what we can do here is like the, um, the so, so like one of the reasons I like this is to adjust for media queries things like that, right? When we when we have you know right here we don't want everything next to each other, right? We want some some stuff to stack, but maybe not everything. Um, and you know we can just in a I'm not going to actually add the media query right now, but like in a media query. Um, you could say, so in some specific, you know, whatever it is uh, in your tablet viewer or whatever you want to call it, you could say, oh, like, I, I want the, the, you know, the brand to stretch all the way across and I want the search to stretch all the way across. You know, we kind of get that. Um, very easy to change. And we don't have to like, I don't have to mess around down here with uh, ever messing with these actual things. There's obviously going to be times where you're going to want to, uh, but, or there might be other things you want to adjust in these, in these different situations, batting and things like that. But um, this is, this is kind of like the basic, you know, idea here. Um, if we wanted to do, like, if we were on some nice wider screen, uh, you know, we could do, uh, make sort of three columns and uh, sidebar and body, right? And make sure footer goes all the way across to. Um, and there we go. So now, like, you know, this is going on. Um, one of the differences with with grid as opposed to flexbox, right? Is you can see here, brand and sidebar are lining up, which you might want, but you might not want. And you're going to have to get into some shenanigans to get like these two to be smaller, but not line up exactly with the rest of the grids, because it is still um, at the end of the day, it's it is still a grid. So. Um, if you were going to try to do this with, I mean, obviously you can do like, none of this is a very complicated layout choices, right? But you can do all of this with any other CSS stuff. You could even do it with, um, you know, flex or floats and all, all of that nonsense, but it is just so simple and so fast and easy to do it um, here. So um, I'm going to move on quickly. I started, this was my, like, actually my first pass. And then I realized I wanted to do that little intro. Um, also, I have literally no idea how long I've been talking. So, um, so here's like more of an app kind of v thing, right? And we have the same setup. Um, what is this? What is this? Oh, I guess I was changing the background color. Um, so we have you know main brand header body sidebar footer, um, same kind of thing, and. You know, I, I think that I'm going to swap over to the full and we can kind of show and hide instead of sitting here watching me um, type all of this stuff. Um, so, and, I, and also I will share these, these are on CodePen, so I'll, I'll, I'll link to everything. Um, this was, oh, this is just CSS that is just pure styling. Um, so one thing we can do, all right, so here's a one little trick is this supports display grid. Will the supports, Query is uh, nice and handy. Um, again, we can we can check. Can I use um, 
one thing it does, especially with grid is, uh, so anything that's inside it, if a browser doesn't recognize the query or doesn't fit it, uh, it, the browser just won't even try to apply it, which is really great. It's a nice feature of CSS. Um, and you can see here that IE 11 does not support the supports query, um, which means I can just like hide it entirely from, um, from, from my grid stuff and not have to worry about it getting all funky. Um, so that's just a little like little trick. But I'm going to do this real quick, step at a time. Um, and another thing you can do, if you're want to, if you're locally debugging and want to quickly turn things on and off without having to delete things, whatever, you can do display and nonsense, or you can just put any nonsense in here, and uh, it just won't apply it. So that's just a nice little thing uh, to start. But all right, so if we started um, fresh here, this is like this is what we had before, just stack layout, normal, um, you know, just normal div stuff. There's nothing exciting going on there. Um, so my first pass was um, what I want to do is make this more of an app, right? Where our header hangs out at the top um, and we get some scrolling and stuff like that, right? So this is this is more of like uh, what we can do in the mobile view. Um, so so another nice thing we can do is we set this main to take up the entire space, right? And overflow like hidden. So instead of the body, you know, scrolling the body, you know, like this thing sticks to the entire size of your windows. Um, grid template rows is uh, the other side of grid template complements, uh, uh, columns, excuse me. So you can um, you actually specify the sizes. So I said auto, auto, um, you know, 90 pixels is this one. And then uh, this takes up the rest of the space. So this is kind of like flex one if you're used to flexbox. Um, and all that, the only rest of the thing I did was hit overflow auto in body and overflow auto in this is the sidebar. And now we have this thing scrolling. Um, our stuff stays at the top, the footer stays, like this thing stays at the bottom and scrolls. Obviously this is, <clears throat> excuse me, obviously this is like not good, but this is nice and it's handy. Um, so uh, another kind of really cool thing that Grid can do is, um, so here I said, I just want this to be the brand, the header and the body, right? And I'm hiding the sidebar sort of. Um, and so in, uh, okay, so the other, <laughs> I should have started with this open, but the other thing that you can do with grid is you can actually assign two elements to the same, um, the same grid spot. And so here, that's what I did here, right? Grid column one and grid row one, four. Okay, so this sidebar, all right, let me slow down here a little bit. I'm sorry, but the, I'm going to turn this off. Excellent. The, um, this sidebar element is actually sitting and like it's actually sitting. Let me see what this is going to look like. Hopefully, this isn't too crunched, but um, you can see here the sidebar is sitting in, in the same spot that the brand header and body are sitting in. Okay, so it's actually overlaying all the entire rest of the thing without any position absolute or messing with, you know, having to worry about overflow scrolling, all that stuff. Um, which is really cool. And then you can do things like I was just doing here where you can say, okay, well, I don't want it to be the whole width, um, but it's still in the actual column. Um, Firefox also quickly has a grid, a really nice grid inspector setup. So if you click on where it says grid, if you click on it, it'll highlight your rows and columns. Um, if you had a gap in there, which I don't, uh, it'll, it'll show that too, which is cool. Um, but maybe. No, oh, I probably set that to zero somewhere else. But anyway, um, so anyway, I take that back off. Um, <laughs> so this was this was just kind of like a, a bonus the bonus thing that I wanted to show. But the the hiding and showing sidebar is kind of a neat trick. Um, let's see, where are we? And then uh, what was the next next one was. Oh, now we want to kind of clean up. All right, so now we want to make like an actual sidebar layout, right? So that's that's here, right? So this is just like our brands all the way across, you know, our header, header, you know, our headers here, sidebar body. Um, so you can, these aren't like, the white spice here doesn't doesn't matter. So you, the nice thing to do is uh, kind of line them up like that. Um, another quick little function that Greg gives you is min-max, uh, which is really handy. So you have uh, one fraction as the normal one, but it won't go less than 250 pixels. Um, so so like if we get into a tight uh, window, it'll just it'll stay there, but it'll get bigger after a while. Um, and then the last step was, uh, what do we do here? This is just another little 
Uh, I don't even remember exactly what was in here. Dun, 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 dun. No, we need to get the large, don't we? Yeah, large. Okay, so here's so here's just like the this is like nice brand, uh, so, you know, sidebar header and body. Um, if you looked at this layout to start, you might, you know, be inclined to make this all one sidebar or something like that. Um, having it in grid and four different things makes it really easy to just swap um, back and forth, up and down, uh, and stuff like that. Um, this also uh, applies very easily to um, media queries. So I don't know why, um, why this is backwards, but um, yeah, you guys are just going through examples. Um, no, yeah, I was doing the same thing. It's just stepping through. Okay, so media. So this is like a media object, which is kind of like what people generically call this thing, right? Picture and bar in a, in a card or something. Um, and so we have again three, like three elements: title, body, image, and um, and and so we can just say the grid area is image for image and body and you know everything like that, and then set our template areas like this. And that just lets us very easily do things like in certain uh, situations, if we want to have the title at the top stretching all the way across and then image and, and body, it's really, really easy. It's just one line to change. Oops, that's a double comment. Um, same here. So this is title image, but so this is like stacked, right? Title image body. And um, well, this was, I was just trying out a right aligned one, but you would need to mess with the um, like alignment in this one. But uh yeah so fun thing you know, kind of fun stuff um if you want to dig a little bit more into this specific pattern um our members page is actually making use of this in a couple different ways um so any anybody you want to kind of like you know if you want to inspect it and, and play around and then um i'd be happy to you know talk about it and, and, and share everything like that uh, the the card itself is is doing some swampity doing and also like the actual header element itself inside here has this name the social and um, these tags and they will stack or spread out depending on our different browser situations too so um kind of fun different stuff with the, like very very simple changes um in the css uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it for grid areas. There's a lot. I mean, they, I would just scratch the surface on on grid. There's uh, tons and tons and tons of stuff to talk about um, forever. But um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for today. So thank you. Um, obviously, follow up uh, in Slack 